Things and sure. and making people who felt awful about themselves feel good about themselves mm. because they experienced your loving kindness mm. and we just thank you Jesus because we just don't know what we would do without your loving kindness mm -hmm. so we pray today that we might hear from you mm. and that we all might be a blessing to everybody we think about speak about or mm. see in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Good to see you. Nice to be here. And we're been thinking about uh, Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, which is such an amazing verse. It's like a kind of Reader's Digest version of the Old Testament. It's like an abbreviated version of everything that's ever happened in Israelite history. And it reminds you of what Val was praying about, that... that, that Christ is our centerpiece, but the story of Christ is eternal, is cosmic, is from times, time immemorial, from the beginning. The Lamb was slain before the foundation of the world. And in Hebrews chapter 1, verse 1, it creates this wonderful picture and in my bible here it's got a headline and the headline is god's final word it's, it makes me think of a, a parent shouting up to a tricky teenager saying i'm you don't want me to come up there <laughs> so it's, i'm giving you my final word this is your final warning but god's word is not a warning it's a promise it's a promise you know when we we still say to this day we say i give you my word i give you i promise you i promise you i give you my word and god gave us his word and his word is jesus his word is christ so this is how god speaks so when we look at jesus we look at what God is saying. God is in a conversation with us and it's a conversation that's been going on since the beginning of time. And Hebrews 1 verse 1 starts off, in the past God spoke to our ancestors through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days 
He's spoken to us by his son. Now, according to the writer of Hebrews, the last days means what it says. It means it means the end of the world. It means the end of the age, the end of the age. We're finishing with this. So you're saying, well, wait a minute, we've had at least a couple of thousand years since he said that. He said, yes, but according to his point of view, we're living in the last days when Jesus came to the earth that was God's final word we're still living so in terms of chronology you know it's ticking up five minutes to midnight but in terms of history it's we're still living in these last times and he says in these last days he has spoken to us by his son whom he has appointed heir of all things what does an heir mean well an heir is somebody who inherits all things. So it means all the things come to, to him or her. If you're the heir to a legacy, it means it all comes to you. And so he's saying God has appointed Jesus as the heir of all things. All things come to him. In these last days, he's spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir of all things and through whom also he made the universe. And that takes you back to Genesis chapter one, verse one. And that that passage where it says, and God said, and God said. And then it takes you forward to John's gospel. In the beginning was the word and the word was with God as near to God as a Word is to the one who speaks it. Wait a minute, we just try that experiment. Okay, watch very closely. Okay. <laughs> Valerie. <laughs> okay, so I'm saying a word, but this is Ken saying a word to Valerie. It's not Valerie, it's, it's Ken. And, and here between us is this word, this word, and it is expressed out of me and but it's expressed to Val and it creates something it creates relationship isn't that wonderful so God speaks the world into being through his word this is what it says here through whom he made the whole universe let there be light let there be Valerie <laughs> and he creates relationship through his speaking word so well, how does this how does this how does this happen how does this well it's he, he goes on the sun is the radiance of God's glory now this is another metaphor just in the same way as he speaks about a word coming out of a speaker now he speaks about light coming out of a light source so you have a, the sun and you have the rays coming out the rays aren't the sun but you wouldn't have the rays without the sun okay s-u-n of course the sun s-o-n is the radiance of god's glory god shines and wet wherever wherever the sun is you see you see god you see god you see god working he is the exact representation of his being, sustaining all things by his powerful word. And amazing. And when Jesus walked the earth, he, he represented, he demonstrated the same thing. He spoke words. He spoke words and he said, he said, be be thou unmuzzled, you know, the guy who couldn't hear, he said, or the one who was blind. He spoke words. He said, get up, you, you know, to somebody who's lying there crippled. And the same word that means get up also means be raised. He spoke to Lazarus. Lazarus, come forth. So he didn't speak to God. He represented God. He spoke God's powerful, creative word. Oh, this is incredible. Doesn't it make you? This is what the, the writer to the Hebrews is trying to get, get to us. He's saying all of this is, is, is in Jesus. All of this is in Jesus. But there's, there's, 
just a little bit more that we'll go for today. And that that is, well, there's there's so much more. I think we'll spend we'll spend the week and go through just some of this. But um, one thing is our humanity is tied forever to his humanity. There's a wonderful part of Hebrews chapter one. Why don't you read the whole of the chapter just to get a grip, a gra a grasp, a grasp of what I'm uh, trying to trying to say here, and read from. Well, let's read read uh, chapter two. He quotes from Psalm eight. What is man? What is mankind that you're mindful of them? A son of man that you care for them? You made them. Now this is us. This is us made in the image of God. You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honour and put everything under their feet. And so he's reminding us of who we are in him. Maybe you look at yourself and you feel very, very low, very, very inadequate, very substandard but you're not looking at yourself the way that God sees you you're not rem you're not remembering that you're made in the image of God you're created by the Son he is the radiance of God's glory he is the exact representation of his of God's being he sustains everything by his powerful word he has created you and you are crowned with glory and honor everything under their feet we don't yet see everything subject to them. We've not yet entered into our proper status as human beings. Have a look, what, have a look at this. It's chapter 2, verse 8. At present, we do not yet see everything subject to, the, to, to mankind, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels, human, for a little while, now crowned with glory and honour, because he suffered death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. In bringing many sons and daughters to glory, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom everything exists, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through what he suffered. Through Jesus you were brought into what you truly are, a son and a daughter of God. Both the one who makes people holy and those who are made holy are of the same family. Let's uh, think about that. Let me just say something to you. When you criticise yourself, you're forgetting that you're made by God. When you like, just feel a failure and concentrate on your inadequacy, you're forgetting that you've been made in the image of God, made for him, and that God has a purpose for you and a plan and that you are wonderfully made. Now this is a truth, and it's a truth that sets you free, that Christ is our pioneer, it's like he's, he's the guy with the machete forging his way through the undergrowth. And you, you get to follow in a path that he set. But he is the image of God and he calls you into who he is. Amen. It's powerful, isn't it? We'll come back to it and we'll, we'll take this thought through chapter one and a bit of chapter two in as we go through the week. But let me just... Uh, Let's just pray over all of us. We're, we're one family. We're one family. And your identity is godly. Your assignment is a servant. You're, you're called to be a servant. We're called to serve. Jesus said, I don't come among you to boss you about. I come. <laughs> no, it wasn't quite that, was it? I come to serve you. So our assignment is service. But our identity is godly. He's godly. Be who you are. God has called us into holiness.
Lord, in Jesus' name, put your seal upon your, your family, that we may know who we are in you, that we may relax into acknowledging you as our Lord, you as our Father, and you as our brother, you as our friend, and you as one of us, mm. and us as one of you. Mm. In Jesus' name. Yes, amen. amen. And Lord, for anyone who's forgotten how precious and wonderful they are, you made them in your image. Any of us who've forgotten, I just pray that you'll remind our friends how loved they are by you mm. and how precious they are to you. In Jesus' name. We pray. Amen. Mm. Mm.